Well, initially they were going to build this thing as a parabola. Uh, it would just be able to look straight up, and then as the Earth went over objects, you could probably look at things for like a minute or something. But then some guy at DARPA said, hey, why don't you make it a sphere? Because uh, a, the, yeah. a sphere has a neat property that if you're at the center of curvature, no matter where you look, it's, it looks the same. And so uh, you can actually track an object now by just... But the problem is that the focus of a sphere, rather than being a point, is a line. And that's what that long line feed is. Yeah. It's the 90-foot focus for the, the size of this dish. Yeah. And so uh, if you want to track an object, all you have to do is just you know point the line feed at opposite from the direction you want to look. The wave comes in and, and it comes up and focuses on the line. And then you just move the azimuth and see the thing. Well, they're track, they're track the thing as it goes across the sky. So now we can track things for about, depending on the declination, about you know, two and a half hours. The problem with line feeds, though, is, is that they're narrow band. You can get them out of, you know, the, the wave comes in and the, the outer, the, at the edge of the dish, that it, it focuses at the bottom of the line feed, and as you come down, it moves up the line feed. So when you're right underneath it, it focuses at the top of it. And so then you have everything is in phase, but it's spatially extended by 90 feet. And then the problem is, well, how do I now bring this thing to a point and remain that phase? Uh, so that's what the line feed does, but it's a narrow band object, so it's like 10%. So we can never go above like 2 gigahertz when we had the line feeds before the, this dome was put in. So they, in, in the 90s, they took down one of the carriage houses, the one over there. There was another one over here, they took it down, and they, <coughs> they put the dome up there, which is a, it's like a groin, has a, it, there's two reflectors inside there. So the wave comes down, hits the dish, and then goes up, and goes through the focus, and then goes into the dome, and there's two reflectors that, that refocus it to a point. And you just put your feet right there on the point, and you no longer have any spatial problems with bandwidth or, or frequency. So you can go up to like, we can go up to like 10 gigahertz. Look on here. Maybe you do want to turn it off and come out here. So there's just some load cells on there that measure the uh, tension in the lines. Yeah, there's, there's, right here, there's, 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 there's a pin that hold it. say because the operator uh, <coughs> Elliot's the nicest guy in the world that operator. I really like him. My friends are really nice. <laughs> so we used to mistakenly come down here and talk and people up there could actually listen to here to see what you say. All right, this is the uh, the jack and then there's the two cables and that thing is the the load cells actually just the pin is the yeah, pin. Yeah yeah and then uh, we got some things here and then there's the, the motors right there and the encoder. Is, is over here on the other side. And then the electronic control is in this thing. It's got it closed up so it doesn't make any RFI. And the reason why this block is here because <coughs> there, if all three of these is strong enough to actually to pull the platform down. Got it. And so once you once you put 120,000 pounds of tension on this thing, you lift the block up and you can't pull it any more than that. I guess during the day it's actually, it's, at the day it's easier to see all these cables. It looks a little bit, uh, it looks like this is where the aliens should land or something. And it has that eerie <coughs> feel in this yeah. light. Uh -huh. It's very true. Well, because you can't really see the cables well, it almost looks like you know, this thing is very ill-supported. Uh -huh. like well, the cables don't do anything but pull it down. It's the support, well, yeah, yeah, the yeah, support no, cables are along there. Yeah. yeah. Every 25 yeah. feet. There's that. <coughs> And when it rains, it really rains down here. It's uh, it kind of that thing can turn into a lake. There was a there's a sinkhole over there, but when they built the place, they had to cut away parts of the hill and actually plugged up the sinkhole a little bit, the drainage. And so they they put a, a pump in over there to pump the water up over the the top of that mountain. And that one over there, they tried to put this block 
on a build a foundation. It turned out they found another another sink. I mean, cave opening. So they actually had to put a bridge across it because uh, <laughs> it just went down. So this goes down to the Tanama River, which is on the other side of that ridge. There's a, this is like one of the larger cave systems in the in the Western Hemisphere, the Kimberley Caves. Yeah, that's what. Um Dana uh, said. Dana was mentioning. Yeah. He, yeah, said, he said there's some publicly open ones as well that you can mm -hmm. go to. He said the, the microphone was. Yeah. Oh, that it's the directional mic. Yeah. In the PVC. Austin. Everybody says you have to wear a hard hat when you come under the dish, and that's in case something falls, like a nut or something, falls off of the platform. If you didn't have a hard hat, it would hit your head and go through it and kill you. Now, if you hit your hard hat, it'd break your neck and kill you. But it's, <laughs> for some reason, it makes it sound like it. Uh, it's like when they were dropping I lead nuts. balls. <laughs> oh, you don't have to have a very big one. It's 500 feet. Yeah. Well, they were doing that in the war. They were dropping huh? lead balls out of planes. Mm -hmm. Pretty nasty. Anyway, that's uh Thanks for the Still a beautiful time of day though, with the clouds and the final rays of the sun. If you actually just lock or we had a queue, get on, if you went on the anchor it's kind of neat, but then you just look over the whole valley. Just. Well, I guess I've been staring at this dish so much that it doesn't, to me, it's a nice to look out here, but everybody that comes is probably <laughs> a little bit more interested than this dish. So. Well, it's beautiful terrain, too. Yeah. Well, this is that, this is that car's kind of, it's just, uh, all of this would be sold to this fucking uh, cave. cave is that kind of the, the case for the whole island? No, it's just for this one area, the cars in, in through here. Right there, see, you want to run up front? All right, I might just have a quick look up here. Thank you. 
underneath, do you hear that noise? Yeah, I was wondering what you about that. It's, uh, it's air. Compressed air is being pumped up through the cables. Really? So the cables are actually threaded, you know, wire, yes. rope. And one of the early problems we had was that uh, it was erosion. The, some of the strands were popping because they were rusting. And so one of the, the guys, the engineering guy, had this bright idea. Of he can actually pump compressed air through the thing. Through the dry air? Well, no, it's not dry air. It just is it's positive pressure. And so that the water doesn't, doesn't uh, seep into the thing. Oh, okay. And so it's... Uh, hmm. That's very clever. Yeah, yeah. well then they, they paint the outside of it, but if there's any anything tries to get in, it actually pushes it out. And since then we haven't had too much trouble with erosion. I mean, uh, rust on the cables. You can see the catwalk as well. Yeah, but you guys probably get the catwalk tomorrow. And what's that structure sticking out from the top of that hill that's, there? That's just power lines All right. that no longer work. And is that a, a telecom tower in the distance there? That uh, very tall one? Well, let me put my glasses on. But that's G.G. Avilar's tower. It's a, it's a hotline to God. It's a religious television station. Yeah. I, I've been up to that tower four times in the last two months. Because <clears throat> they don't believe in frequency regulation. They, especially all these people that are, that are uh, providing uh, internet for people. They use the, the five gigahertz, yeah. you know, band, yep. and these guys are like tuning way outside of it. And they said, "Well, you know, we didn't have the signal was a lot clearer out here." And I said, "I wonder why, because none of the other people were using it." So we we've gone up there, and the same guys, like six months later, they're doing it again. Oh, our our, our equipment broke, but uh, it takes about an hour and a half, two hours to get up there. From here, huh? From here, or, or? yeah, yeah. And is that someone's property or house? Yeah, there's a, well, this is all, this is, uh, that has all been, this has all been bought by the Puerto Rican government, all this area is. But, matter of fact, this is probably the last part of Puerto Rico that doesn't have lots of people living in there. It's, everywhere else you go in Puerto Rico, there'll be houses and people living. But yeah, there's a, there's a people that have a house there and they can stay there as long as they, it was bought after they were there, so they can stay there. The guy's a farm, he has a bunch of cows in there. He's very good. The, uh, you can't really see the. Uh, don't slip on this. But anyway, the, the cave is right over there. It's uh, behind. You can't see from here. But you you walk down the river. And, uh, you know, it's really dark as you get in there. You cross the river and walk across all these rocks. 